Good morning, and welcome to Rosemont Grace's online live stream of our Mother's Day message. Uh, today I want to talk to you about moms. Uh, specifically, I'm going to get into talking about women, but I, I want to I start out by saying Happy Mother's Day. Well, so many of us that have, have had excellent, excellent moms, and I just want to say we love you. We love you so much. Mother's Day can be a joy for so many people. I can't tell you, uh, when I think of Mother's Day, how, how much joy it brings me because I've been impacted by three incredible women in my life. My, my wife, who is the mother of my children. My, my own mother, my own mom, Kim Leisure, who's been in my, my life the whole time, always been there for me, always been supporting me and loved me. And my mother-in-law, Anna Rojas. She has always been there, uh, been along my si- alongside me and my family. And All these women have impacted me in amazing, amazing ways. I wouldn't be who I am today without the impact of them in our life, in my life. And so kind of where I'm I'm going with this is, is moms are important. Moms, they play a massive role in our lives. So as you're sitting there right now, you're sitting there today and you're listening to these words, I want you to ask yourself, who has impacted me in my life? Which woman, which mom, which mothering figure in my life has impacted me in such a way that, that I am who I am today? Are you with your mom right now? Is, is your mom in the room right now? Are you watching me speak to you over the internet with your mom in the room? If this is the case, I want you to get up right now and I want you to give your mom a hug. And I want you to tell her you love her. If she's not in the room, I want you to pull out your phone, or if you're not watching it on this, and I want you to send a text. I'm going to send a text right now to my mom and tell her that you love her and that you're going to give her a call later today. So pull your phone out. I'm going to give you a minute to do this. I love you, Mom, and I'm going to call you later can't call you right now but I really I really hope that you did that and 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 remember that when later on today call your mom if your mom is still with you and you can talk to her give her a call the truth is moms have a lot of impact on us on our lives but and so for many of us when we when we think of a mom we have happy thoughts but for some of us Mother's Day today is is just a rough time because you know, not every grew up, everyone grew up with a wonderful, excellent mother. You know, not everyone grew up with a mom. For many of us, you know, maybe our moms have passed away, maybe in the last year, and this is the first Mother's Day without mom. For you, we're thinking about you today. We care about you, and I've been praying all week for, for the motherless, you know. Um, maybe there are some ladies out there who have wanted to be moms, and they just haven't had the opportunity. They've not been able to be a mom. Maybe you can't find um, a husband, or maybe you've been married for a long time and you just haven't been able to have kids. We're with you today as well. And then there's another category of, that, that may bring sadness to Mother's Day. Maybe your mom is still alive today, and she's around somewhere, but she is struggling through a really debilitating disease, you know, like Alzheimer's or dementia. And you just want to call her and talk to her, and you can't. Well, I want you to know that God knows what you're feeling, and he's thinking about you today. So as as joyous as Mother's Day can be for some, it's also very sensitive for others. For those who are struggling with Mother's Day, we're with you, we're praying for you, we care about you, and I want you to know that you're not alone. There are many people that you can reach out to that can love you in this moment. The truth is that today catches us all... uh, in differences in our emotions. You know, we, we have our emotions maybe up and down. Our perspectives on Mother's Day are different. Some of us are, are caught in our past and some of us are caught looking at our future. We're all over the map. Well, I'm going to ask you today for this moment to give your emotions to God. Give, give your circumstances and your perspective to God this morning. Give your past to God and give your future to to God. And we're going to dive into his word and we're going to see some things that I believe today will be encouraging, but then also challenging. You know, I might not know how today is treating every one of us. 
Now, I, I don't know everyone who's listening right now. I don't know where everyone is in their life. I don't know how many of you have your mother with you right in this moment. But I do need, know that every single person hearing my words right now is here today listening because they've got a mom. They've had a mom. They've had a mother. They have someone who birthed them, someone who gave birth to them. And every single one of you hearing me is a gift in this world because of your mother. You know, Psalm 127, verses 3 to 5, it says this. It says, don't you see that children are God's best gift? The fruit of of the womb, his generous legacy. Like a warrior's, warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. So remember, even when things are extremely difficult and you've had, your, you've had it up to here with those little ones, moms, remember they're a gift and they're a blessing from God. And if you're a mother and you have adult children and you're still struggling with uh, that relationship with them and they're being hard-headed at times, just remember those children are a gift from God. Today, I want to take some time, we want to use this time to recognize and celebrate mothers and, and even challenge you all and, and encourage you. So um, just take a moment, just think about the moms. All you moms out there, once again, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for being a mom. Thank you for the, the countless hours of washing laundry and dishes. Thank you for the hours of, of teaching us, how to grow up and be better men and women. Thank you for the the sacrifice and the sleepless nights where you worry about our futures. All of these things. We thank you, Mom, for loving us. Well, I want to give today in two parts. First, the first part, I want to encourage all of you moms out there. Then I'd like to share a challenge with you. But first, the encouragement. And and the, the encouragement is this. You do not have to compare yourself with any other mom. Be encouraged by this, moms. You do not have to compare yourself with any other mom. You know, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, it's, it's a verse that maybe some of us are familiar with. Well, this was Samuel, and he was going, um, he was being led by God to go anoint King David to anoint David before he was going to be king. You know, King Saul was still the king, and David was just a, a boy. You know, a young teen. And, and so Samuel went to anoint him. And he's having this conversation with God. And he's going, God, I don't really see anybody king worthy here. And God looks at him and he says, The Lord doesn't th- see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Moms, you don't have to compare yourself to other moms. Have you ever... Um, looked at other moms and thought to yourself, wow, she's doing a really great job and I am just not, not up to par. You know what I'm talking about. You, you know, we've got these, these devices. We've got these things called social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever you want to call it. And there's always that one mom on there who just looks like she's super mom, right? It's like she's got all, everything, every picture is, you know, of her and the kids. They're just doing something awesome. They're some amazing adventure. The house is perfectly spotless. You know, she's taking pictures of the food that she's making. And you're constantly looking at your Facebook feed or your Twitter feed, and you're feeling inadequate, right? You're not, you're feeling like you're not worthy. You know what I'm talking about. I I hear it all the time. We get caught Have you ever looked at another mom and gotten caught in the comparison loop? Have you gotten caught thinking with a comparison complex? And so you start to make decisions in your life based on comparing yourself to another. You know, maybe maybe the comparison is, wow, I'm a pretty good mom because I just saw that, that mom in the grocery store do that thing that I would never do. But then you get home and you turn on the TV or you, your friend calls you or something and they say the thing that they did that was great that day. And in that moment, you realize, I'm not as great as her, though. The truth is this, guys, women. All moms mom differently. They do. Moms mom differently based on their natural gifts and abilities. 
You all are designed uh, with different personalities and talents. And you've especially got something different that every other mom doesn't have. Your own children. Your children are all different and they all need to be mothered. They all need to be mommed in different ways. In a way that God's designed them and designed you. And I, I got to tell you this. God has designed every single one of you moms differently. And even though you're all designed differently with different abilities and different gifts and different talents, you all have the same goal, which is the goal of the church. Matthew 28 says our goal, our purpose is to what? To make disciples and mothers. You all do it differently, but your goal is to make disciples. Your goal is to make your children, to grow them in a, in a way that they can fall in love with Jesus Christ. They want to understand and fall in love with their creator. And that happens and that starts with a mom. Yes, dads have to do this too, but today it's Mother's Day and so I'm, I'm going to hit on this point. Moms, your goal is to train up disciples. Your goal is not to train up disciples in the same way that every other mom does it either. Don't get caught in the comparison loop. So instead of comparing yourselves to other moms, I want you to look at what God says about you. You know, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, you know, I wonder how encouraging it would be for moms or women in general if when they opened up their news feed on their social media, if God had a social media account. What if God really did have a Facebook page? What if God really did have an have a Instagram or a Twitter feed? And it got me thinking, what would God be saying? What are the pictures that he'd be posting or the videos that he'd be putting up there? What is it that God would be doing to encourage you and to challenge you as moms? Well, I believe that if God had a Twitter, if he had a Twitter account, this is what he would tweet. His first tweet would be this. Will you please throw it up? And he would say this. He would say, Moms, I love you. And I love who I made you to be. You only answer to me, so there's no need to compare yourself to others. You know, you can, you can hashtag, uh, you know, 1 Samuel 16, 7 on that. You can hashtag the Psalms where God says, you know, that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. But here's the truth. God loves you, moms, and he's made you to be who he made you to be. So don't get caught in a comparison loop or comparison complex because God and his Twitter feed from heaven is saying, look, you only answer to me. I look at your heart. I don't look at whether you're feeding your kids filet mignon or spam. I'm looking if you're giving them the bread of life. I'm looking if you're, if you're growing your children to be strong and respectable men and women for me in the, in the kingdom of God and in society. So, I, so I'm here today. The encouragement today is don't give in to mom guilt. Don't do it, ladies. I know it's hard. Moms, you will all mom differently, but your goal for the child is always the same, to train them, to teach them, to make disciples. It's time to stop looking at other moms. You got to quit looking around the room. Stop looking at other work moms. Stop looking at other stay-at-home moms. Stop looking at other moms that are good at homeschool and you're not right now. Stop looking around and start looking up. God, who do you say I am? And what do you want from me? Here's the thing, you're never going to measure up. You're never going to measure up to the, you know, I may date myself here, but you know, you'll never measure up to the Donna Reeds and the Judy Cleavers. You know, or Marge Simpson. You know, whatever it is, whatever mom that you think of, you, you're not going to measure up to them. Because they are not your standard. What God says about you and what he expects of you, that's the standard. And 1 Samuel 16, 7 says that there's only one opinion that counts, and it's God.
God's opinion. The one person who created moms. The one person who created mothering. Think about it. Who better to define what a good mom is and who better to tell you than the one who invented motherhood in the first place? And this brings us to our next section. The challenge. I believe that God, the creator of moms, the creator of motherhood, I believe that if, if, if God were, were here right now, he would say this. He would say, to be a good mom, you first got to be a good woman. So this is the challenge. Be a good woman. Do you want to live up to God's standard of, of being a good mom? Well, you've got to be a good woman. The encouragement is this. You don't have to compare yourself to any other woman on the planet. You don't have to compare yourself to any other mom. You don't have to compare yourself to your mom. Why? Because God looks at the heart and God says, I've got something special for you. But the challenge is this. Be a good woman. And the, the, the awesome thing about this is that God doesn't just leave us hanging. He doesn't just say, be a good woman, read the entire Bible and try to go, draw from it and figure out what it is. He's put a chapter in the Bible that shows us the breakdown, and it's a picture of what a good woman is. And i got to tell you, this woman is flawless, and she's impossible to meet in these um, sin-racked bodies that we have. We, we can't meet the standard that she sets, but it's something to strive for. So I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 31. We're going to be looking at Proverbs 31 today. And I'm not going to read all the verses, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to hit some of them and try to paint a picture for you of what it looks like to be a good woman. Because we know in order to be a good mom, you've got to be a good woman. And here's the thing. We can all learn from these words. So if, don't check out on me right now if you're a guy. If you're a guy and you're out there right now, you're going, oh, well, he's going to Proverbs 31. Today's Mother's Day is going to talk all about moms and talk about women and how they need to be good women. Well, I will tell you this, men. These women need our support to grow in Christ. They need our encouragement and our love. They need us to be their number one fan so that they can go do what it is that they've been designed to do. So guys, if there are ladies in your lives that you can impact and you can support in becoming a Proverbs 31 woman. And, and ladies who are not moms, you can still look at this, this uh, great wisdom in this passage and you can apply it to your life. And then you can carry it on and you can pass it on to other ladies around you and you can pass on the wisdom from Proverbs 31, from God's word. You can pass it on to, to women, to children, to boys and girls, so that they can grow up and know what it means to be a good woman. And they'll follow your example. So as we're reading this, don't just look at it like, well, this is just a wife. Men, I want you to look at this and say, how can I help all of the women in my life to become this? And women, I want you to look at it and say, how can I look at all of the relationships in my life and be this woman to all the people that I'm with, to all the people that I impact. So as you can see, this message is going to be for all of us, not just moms and not just women. Guys, you don't get to check out on this one. But I do believe that it will be especially encouraging to women. Well, in Proverbs 31, I believe that if God opened his Twitter account and he wanted to say something, that this is what he would say. Bring up the next tweet. A woman with good character, is priceless. Proverbs 31.10. You know, I forgot the hashtags on this, but I would have hashtag Proverbs 31.10 on this. Proverbs 31.10 says this, A wife of noble character, who can find? She's worth far more than rubies. All right, so it's question time. Are you a mom? Then I want you to ask yourself and God how the truths that we're going to be reading through in this word today how they impact and apply to your own life and how they can be used to help you to, to grow and to be encouraged. These are challenges. And if you're not a mom, for all of the rest of us, I want you to ask yourself and God how you can apply these words in your own life and encourage others as they grow in these same 
character traits and these same character qualities. If God had a Twitter account, this is what I believe he would say, a woman with good character is priceless. And so the first challenge, the first challenge is this. Be a woman of good character. Be a woman of good character. This woman here, it says, she's noble in her character. And she's worth far more than rubies. It's, you know, Solomon, the writer here, is painting a picture of a woman that money can't buy. She's priceless. You know, his mom, this, this King Lemuel, the, the mother, just in the, in the nine verses before that, tells him, you know, take heed to my wisdom, listen to these things as, as you become king, and this is how you need to act. And in the very next portion, the very first thing says, when it's time to take a wife, find somebody who's got good character. So, um, you know, as we bring this back around to Mother's Day, you know, remember, if I believe that God says that if you're going to be a good mom, you first got to be a good woman. And a person, a woman of good character is absolutely priceless. But I, don't, don't shut down if you have flaws, because we all do. Don't shut down on me yet. Let's just dive in and see which parts of this woman that we already have. You know, that's the parts you can ask yourself. You, God, as, as we're going through this passage, God, where am I doing well? Will you please encourage me in those areas? And God, where do I need your help? Will you challenge me in those areas? For women, you're looking at this passage as an evaluation of yourself. And for men, you're looking at this passage as an evaluation of yourself as well. Because the question you should ask yourself is, how well am I promoting these character qualities in the women around me? How well am I promoting the character qualities of a good woman in, in, in my mom or in my wife or in my daughters or in my coworkers? So the, the next thing here that I believe God would tweet, if first he says uh, a, a good woman is, is, is high character, the next thing God would tweet is this, a good woman enriches the lives of those around her. We're going to read Proverbs 31, verse 11 and 12, and then I'm going to jump to, to 23. Proverbs 31, 11 and 12. Her husband has full confidence in her, and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. In verse 23, it says, Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. A good woman enriches the lives of those around her. That's what I believe God would tweet. And so here's the challenge. Make the lives of those around you better. Make them better. Okay, so... <laughs> At the risk of being offensive, and I'm, gonna try, I'm trying not to be, I almost, I almost had a tweet. This was a tweet I had that I, that I wrote, but I decided not to go with it. But I, I wrote, a good woman is like good coffee. She makes everything better. <laughs> now, here's what I'm talking about. Have you ever had a really good cup of coffee? I mean, you know, the, the kind of cup that you just want to keep coming back for? And it's like, oh, i got to go have another one of those? Or... You, you have it, and then you leave, and then you can't stop thinking about it the next morning. Or, you know, you wake up, and you're like, ah, oh, man, I really need a cup of coffee today for this energy. You know, it's make the lives of those around you better. You know, kind of like a good cup of coffee. You know, bring energy to the people around you. Get, make your presence be something that they desire, that they want. Be the coffee that gets people going. You know, and here's, here's the thing about coffee. You can have a good cup of coffee, and it comes in all shapes and forms. You know, some people like their coffee just straight, no sugar, no cream. But others love the lattes. You know, you, you like a whole lot of cream, a whole lot of sugar, maybe just a little bit of coffee. And here's the thing. The coffees come like cappuccinos. They come iced. They come hot. So it, we can kind of, the analogy breaks down a little bit, but you understand what I'm saying. Moms, you all come in different shapes and sizes, and, and the way that you do things are different. But your goal should be the same, to make the lives around you better. Make the lives of those around you better. 
And remember that God made you differently. And so making the lives around you better is gonna, it's going to look different, but you're going to have the same kind of goals in the, in the process or the same character qualities in yourself. In, in Proverbs 31, verse 11, you know, it said that her husband has full confidence in her. And so what does it look like to make the lives of those around you better? You know, if it's your husband or your children or other relationships, be trustworthy so people can depend on you. Be trustworthy. Her husband trusts her with all his heart. He trusts her wisdom, her fidelity, and her business. Do you want to be a good mom? Do you want to be a good woman? Do you want to be a, a woman of good character that is priceless? Well, enrich the lives of those around you by being trustworthy. And then in verse 12, she says, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of his life. This one is so important. Bring good to others and don't cause trouble or be troublesome. Do you want to be a good woman, a good mom? Enrich the lives around you by not being a, a troublemaker. You, you know what I'm talking about. There are those busybodies that make things difficult for people. Don't pick at people. I know this is not super encouraging, but this is the challenge portion. And so the thing, you know, just all of us, you know, husbands, men, sons, uh, boys, are you, the, are you the kind of boys that look at a sister and, and you, and you want to help them enrich the lives around them? Or do you pick at them and irritate them so that they do cause trouble? And the next thing here, you know, I jumped down to verse 23. Um, it says, her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Oh, wow, this verse, there is so much in this. You know, I don't have time to unpack this whole passage, but there is, there is a book in every sentence. But it says that her husband is respected at the gate. Do you want to enrich the lives of those around you? Women, do you want to enrich the lives of your husband? Women, do you want to be a mom who enriches the lives around you? You've got to be trustworthy. Don't call to trouble. Bring good to those around you and bring respect to others by your actions toward them. One of the greatest things that you can do as a woman is promote the respect of others. You know, an easy thing, you know, easy, Pastor Andy, what are you talking about? An easy example is this. When you hear someone bad-mouthing someone else, don't feed into that. Bring respect to that person by standing up for them. Wives, when you're with your other girlfriends, don't badmouth your husbands. Moms, don't badmouth your kids. Build them up. Encourage them. So that when other people, because here's the problem, if you say something negative about someone else, then that person that you've said it to starts to develop a picture in their head of who this person is. And then from that point forward, they, they start to build this, this image that may or may not be true. And as mothers, as women, as people in general, our job should be to, not to, to put negative thoughts in people's heads about other people. Our job is to build up, to edify. So we've got to bring respect by our actions. And in verse 23, it says, her husband is respected at the gate. And, and because he's so respected, he takes his seat among the elders of the land. And that means that he's actually able to do what he set out to do because of the respect that his wife generates in his own life. Because of her interest in him, because of her high character, he's well respected. I'm going to tell you, I feel this way with my own wife. My Katie, you're an excellent mom, and you're an amazing wife. And I feel like that, that people give me respect because you respect me. And that's, that's my, my prayer for all women, that they would love and respect their husbands and their kids. You know, it's the old adage, behind every man, behind every great man is a great woman, right? We've heard this. It's the idea that no man gets to be great in a vacuum. And some women, somewhere, have had some sort of an impact on that guy. So I want you to ask yourself, does, does my relationship with others bring them respect and honor so they can do what, they've, what they're setting out to do? A woman of good character is priceless. 
She enriches the lives of those around her. Do you make people better because you're in their life? The next tweet I believe God would say is this. A good woman lives well in the now, so she's ready for the then. A good woman lives well in the now, so she's ready for the then. Let's read Proverbs 31, 13 to 16. Proverbs 31, 13, it says this. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. And out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. So here's the challenge. A a good woman lives well in the now, so she's ready for the then. What does it look like? Play the long game. When you're in a situation and you're in your life and you feel like I'm in the daily grind, don't get lost and just in that moment understand that you're playing a long game. When it comes to being a mom with your kids, yes, every single day may feel like a struggle and tedious, but understand that you're, you're doing something, you're developing growth in them that, that you're going to be able to look back in 20 years and see. So play the long game. Verses 13 to 16 that says this, it says, plan ahead. Don't wait for the world to come, come to you. Go get it. You know, this lady, she's, she's doing things. She's selecting wool and flax. She's going and, and, and she's getting food. She's selecting what she needs because in the, eventually she's going to have to make clothes for her children and her family. And she's working with her hands. It says she's like the merchant ships and bringing her food from afar. So she's actually planning and going out and getting some things that are maybe a little different. She's thinking about things ahead of time. She gets up while it's still night. And she provides food for her family. I'm not saying that, that you women need to work yourselves to the ground. I'm not saying that moms, you need to be up three hours for everybody else and making five gallons of porridge. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what we're saying here. Maybe some of you guys got to help out a little more here with this at home. But what it's saying is, is a mom who looks and plans, a woman who looks and plans and understands what's coming and prepares today for what's coming. And that, and that shows itself in physical things. That shows itself in emotional things and spiritual ways. All of these ways play the long game. Plan ahead. Don't wait for the world to come get you. Live well in the now so you're ready for the then. More more to go with this playing the long game is verse 17 through 19. Listen to what it says here. It says, She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp doesn't go out at night. She's constantly... She's making sure that she's following through and getting things done. She's working hard. In verse 19, it says her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. It's it's a picture of her making clothes and, and working really hard with it. Drop your eyes down to verse 21. It says, when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She's already done the work. She went out before and bought the bought the. the the, the flax and, and she went out and bought the wool and so then she's made the clothes and prepared for winter so that when the winter comes she's got confidence and in verse 25 it says she's clothed with strength and dignity she can laugh at the days to come that's a picture of her not worrying about things because she's living well now so that she can be ready for the then Do you understand it? You follow me here. I really hope you are. So the challenge is to play the long game. Work hard and follow through. Don't give up. Be diligent. Be prepared for what's coming because then you'll have confidence when then comes because you knew that now you've already done the work. These character traits, their strength, their dignity prepared to stand with your head held high when tough times come because you know you've put in the work. All right, the next, the next thing that I believe God would tweet on his, his page would be this. A good woman knows what to say and when to say it. 
A good woman knows what to say and when to say it. Proverbs 31, verse 26. It says, she speaks with wisdom. And faithful instruction is on her tongue. Do you want to be a good woman with priceless character? Know what to say and when to say it. So here's the challenge. Give great advice. Give great advice. A good mom gives good advice because she knows good advice. You don't just wake up one day and say, oh, all of a sudden, I know what I'm saying. I've got all sorts of growth when it comes to my advice. No, no. Women, how do you get to a place to give great advice? Well, you've got to gain wisdom by reading wisdom. God is wisdom. His words are wise. So what does God say? Look in his word. Study his word. Do you want to be able to pass it on to your children and those around you? Do you want to live a life that is priceless character quality? Well, you've got to understand what that life looks like in reading the word. I know I hit on this every week, but it's just so important. If we're not, if we're not listening to what the ultimate wisdom being in all of the universe is, which is God, the most omnipotent, the most omniscient, all-knowing, if we're not listening to what he says about what we should know, then how can we know how to give good advice to others? So a good woman knows what to say and when to say it. Give great advice because you've studied to give great advice. You've prepared to give great advice. A good woman knows what to say and when to say it. And she goes to the ultimate source in God and his word. Also, that second part of the verse, it says, give, it says, faithful instruction is on her tongue. Do you want to be a good woman, a good mom? Give good advice and don't miss the teachable moments. Don't let life pass you by. When you see your child and you have an opportunity to teach them something, and I'm not talking about berating them or laying into them. I'm talking about coming beside them because this word faithful instruction, it's um, the, the Hebrew word, it's, it's, it's Torah of hesed. It's that hesed love, the loving advice. Faithful, loving advice. When people need a gentle course correction, she knows how to do it lovingly and with wisdom. Don't miss the teachable moments, moms. Women, don't miss the teachable moments. Men, are you supporting your wives in this? Are you being an example of what it looks like to, to not miss the teachable moments? Are you being an example of what it looks like to give good advice and to go to the source for that advice? So how can a woman get these things? How can a woman be a woman of amazing character if nobody's teaching them? Moms, you're so important. We need you. We need you to teach our young ones. We need you to be examples of our young ones, to our young ones. And finally, this is what happens. If you, you read the rest of the chapter, 31 verses 28 to 31. You see some amazing things in there. And it's really cool because the husband at one point in verse 29, he says, Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. And it's, there's a picture of the children who are cheering for their mom. They arise and they call her blessed. And the husband, he praises her. And it says that charms deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her work bring her praise at the city gates. Ladies, if you do these things, if you read Proverbs 31 and you model your life after the Proverbs 31 woman, 
moms. If you do all this, you will impact people for God. You will make disciples. You will do noble things and you'll be praised for it. So as, as we've been met with challenges today, I challenge you to continue reading the word and continuing to grow and, and being a mom. And if God had one last tweet to put out there, I believe that this is what he would put. He would say, no more mom guilt. I love who I made you to be. Moms, no more guilt. God loves you. He made you to be special. He made you to be you. He didn't make you to compare yourself to those other moms and those other ladies. He put a template for what a good woman is in his word. There were many other examples. Take the challenge and be encouraged. I invite you to pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for the moms. Thank you for forgiving me my mom, for giving me all the moms in my life. I thank you, God, for, for all that you do and, and through moms to teach us who you've called us to be. I pray that, that moms all over the world would continue to, to take charge of being an excellent mom. I pray they would see your word and understand how to be good moms and what that looks like. Thank you that we have a moment just to step back and stop and look and pause and reflect and celebrate the moms in our lives. And God, even for the difficult times and difficult memories with their mom, I pray, I pray that you would bring a nugget of blessing, of, of some memory of something positive in that. I pray that you would help them with their perspective. It's in Jesus' name and it's in his blood that we pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, moms. I hope you're encouraged and I hope you're challenged. Look forward to getting with you next week. Have a good one.